Question 6 says, it is mentioned in this blessed ayah, which is the ayah number 12 of Surah Hadith, that glad tidings is for you this day, meaning the result is announced on the day of Qiyamah. Isn't that too much of suspense? Why can't you get the glad tidings in advance in this world? Very good question. Did everybody hear it? Why can't you be given the glad tidings and the good news of prosperity to be, inshallah, among those who will be admitted to paradise a bit earlier? Why do you need to wait all the way until the Day of Judgment? Bismillah, please, share your reflection. I'm sure you have ideas. Can you repeat, please? Yeah, the question is, <clears throat> in simple words, that whatever amal, whatever good deeds we do in this world, the result is given to us on the day of Qiyamah, right? We don't know at the moment what, what is our status. Isn't there too much of suspense? Can we get that result in this world before even we reach there on the day of Qiyamah? Be, 
be odd getting presumptive in his wallet. But I'm sure that it is. <laughs> then we don't get presumptive in his wallet. But we can't see ourselves the result of what he's giving us. Very good, very good point, mashallah. It's not that when you do something good, when you are seeding a plant of a good deed, of good faith, you will not get anything until the judgment day. For sure, you get a portion of it here in Dunya immediately, and soon it will come back to you. Yes. Any further comment? Please. Yes, madam. Yes. And the whole purpose of our journey here in this world is to be tested. Yes. To be tested. And if we were received, we, we were to receive our great tidings in this world, there is a very much probability that we will become spiritually weakened. One. And it is in, in Sans Putra to forget all the blessings we receive from Allah. Had He given us the great tidings of the hereafter in this world, we would tend to go astray and become less spiritual to be more of a heart. Suppose if you know, someone in this world, I'm praying for some person who is in my community, if I am ill. Once he makes me fine, I, I tend to forget the great tidings and I go astray again. Do I? It's, can I explain this? Yes. What Bashiba is saying is that our test in this world is still the last moment. Therefore, the result is announced after. And if we were to get the results now, we will then be uh, yes. contented and complacent and then uh, probably forget what we are doing. Uh, okay. Correct? Is that okay? Thank you for explanation. Yeah, that, that made it more clear. Anything else? Anyone want to add something? So, <coughs> can I critique? Uh, yes, there's one brother at the end. Yes. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to continuously strive because human beings can reach a maximum potential. So if we are doing our glad tidings now, more than we will stop <coughs> striving towards perfection towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Asan, okay. Because there is still room to improve so far as you are alive. That's also very important. Yes. I was actually with Roshan Bhai, but after Bashir Bhai mentioned, I got a bit confused with my answer. Uh, I feel the result of success or failure in the Akira, they are known to men in this world. Uh, now I'm not too sure whether this reference of the ayah of the Quran or this one is appropriate for this in Surah Qayyama. Yes. Is this now, uh, is this something that is self-evident now or is it self-evident going to be then? But there I was not sure. But I feel that subconsciously, I, because I know exactly what I'm carrying with me, so I know the result. And probably one of the reasons that I fear that is because of that. Because I know that I'm not caring enough for my paradise. Yes, but this only in Surah Al-Qiyamah, Bala Insan, Allah Nafsihi Basira, is more about uh, our subconscious that when we do something evil, even though two people and people around me are justifying, or I'm saying that, says that in the back of your mind, you yourself, you know that whether you are doing good or bad. Even though I'm selling it good to people, but I cannot fool my conscience. The message of this idea is that I can fool people by looking good, but inside I'm not good. But I cannot fool myself. This is the conscience that everybody will have. But uh, the question is wider than this, like what you uh, guessed from the beginning. And that is uh, about having the glad tidings or given the glad tidings of the good news of prosperity in dunya. Yes. If you may allow, um, the ayah in Surah Yasin, Surah number 36, ayah number uh, 11, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, inna ma tundiru man ittaba al-dhikra wa khashiya ar-Rahman al-Ghayb wa bashirhu bi maghfirati wa ajrim kareem. The command is given to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that 
those you you can only warn those who have khashiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of his Lord uh, in 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 isolation or in when he's then nobody's there. Then give them glad tidings. So this means that probably there were somebody around the Prophet who were following this, were fitting in this criteria, and he did give them Bashara in this world. I think the conclusion will come to the ayah that I also mentioned yesterday, and it's in Surah Yunus. There are people that for them there is glad tidings in dunya and glad tidings in akhara. See Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very explicit here that there is a good news for them in dunya and good news in akhara. And throughout the Quran, mashallah, I saw that some of the, uh, like the one that Hajjiyas had said, when you search about the terms like Fawz al-Azim, great uh, prosperity, about Muflih, Ulaika Humul Muflihun, in the uh, first, second page of the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those who believe in the unseen, in <coughs> charity and namaz and everything, the Quran says, Ulaika Humul Muflihun, or the ayah in Surah Yasin that God mentioned. Of course, throughout the Quran, when, wherever that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about good characteristics, mentions that these are guaranteed to have prosperity. The question, however, remains that am I among them or not? But am I among those or not? God doesn't say, doesn't address me. Because the criteria is there and the promise is there. SubhanAllah, Imam Sadiq has an example. If uh, I may uh, have time, one minute very quickly, I will explain that example. The situation of movement in dunya is always like this and has to be always like this. Try to always keep the balance of hope and fear in you. Those who are filled with too much fear are going astray. Those who are filled with too much hope, they are going astray. Keep the balance of hope and fear. Anytime, anything good that you do or even any evil that we do, keep the hope and fear balanced. Imam Sadiq gives this example. He says, imagine there is a bush fire in a bush. And on the top of a tree, there is a nest of a bird. There is a baby bird in the nest. And the flame of the fire is coming up. I'm paraphrasing it kind of. But the sense is what Imam Sadiq is saying. Now, the mother or the father bird is coming and is grabbing the baby and flying away. The baby is under the strong clothes of mom or dad. So feels secure. At the same time looks down is so scary. Fire and the flame of the fire feels the heat of the fire. The moment that feels the, the heat of the fire is scared. The moment looks that mom or dad with the strong clothes is holding me feels safe and secure. Imam Sadiq says a movement is like this. If I don't know, I don't Imam Sajjad says in Dua Abu Hamza, when I look at my sins and I remember my sins, I'm desperate. I'm filled with so much fear. But when I look at your mercy and generosity, I'm filled with hope. So in dunya, we are like this always. Nobody knows among us even sitting here and higher than us. And I'll give you an example from Ahlul Bayt alayhi wasalam. None of Ahlul Bayt alayhi wasalam, even in dunya, they said that I'm prosperous. Only and until at the end of the life of dunya, because of what the brother says and brother Bashir, because the test is not over yet. Nobody knows how you are going to end your life. So the final glad tidings is not issued for you and I or for anyone else until we finish the game of dunya, the test of dunya. Therefore, even Amir al mumini he was praying, giving sadaqah, thousands of prayers. Someone says, Ya Amir al mumini isn't it enough? How much do you want to pray and how much sadaqah do you want to give? Was only if I know if it's accepted. Because the game is not over yet. But when he is struck by Ibn Muljam al it was only then in his lifetime that it was heard Imam Ali al says, Fusto Barab bin Ka'be. Now I'm prosperous because Imam knows that this is the end of the, the test and his life ended with Shahada.
less than that before that even Ahlul Bayt never claimed that on prosperous although they are but on principle they didn't say that so on the night before Ashura Imam Hussein -Islam, according to Rivayat showed the uh, status of each one in paradise. in paradise yes so isn't this revealing their uh, even earlier than that, see the knowledge is something, even earlier than that, the Holy Prophet Anna mentioned that before Imam Hussein Alayhi Salaam departs Medina, when he goes to the grave of the Holy Prophet and in the dream the Holy Prophet gives him the glad tidings and the promise that you will be martyred. And there is a status we say for you in paradise, uh, unless you are martyred you will not attain that one. These glad tidings were given to them, that's why I said Quran says, لَهُمُ الْبُشْرَ فِي الْحَيَاتِ الدُّنْيَا That's the part of it. So temporarily the glad tidings is given, but the final mark will not be issued until the life of dunya is completely over. Okay, we move on to the next one. The last question, question number three. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in some places in the Holy Quran address the believers by segregating them by their gender, such as believing men and believing women? In as, this, in this as in this ayah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yawma taral mu'minina wal mu'minati. Yes, yes. So the, I repeat the question with the marking case sisters and those brothers in the back they don't hear. The question is that, why is it that often in the Quran, and not very often, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explicit about the gender, like in this ayah, the day that the believing uh, men and the believing women, they know will be striving ahead of them. But very often Quran is not uh, using any gender or if I make it a little bit or play a devil advocate, it seems that very often Quran is talking to men. Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, literally it means all you men who believe. If it's women, you it, grammatically you would say ya ayyuhalladina amanna, all you female who believe. Ya ayyuhalladina amanu literally means all oh, you men who believe and how often throughout the Quran God says oh, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu Similarly, inna alladina kafaru sawa'un alayhim an zatahum am lam turzeru Alladina is uh, uh, mawsood It means those, but in Arabic those means men Kafaru, yani those men who disbelieve Why Quran doesn't speak about disbelieving uh, uh, women, few instances in the Quran they are mentioned, few instances in the Quran, female believers, female hypocrites, female disbelievers are mentioned, but most of the time Quran it seems talking only to men and females are excluded, why? Bismillah. That's a very good question. I, I try to play the devil advocate. <laughs> The ladies are not there. The ladies are up there, too. Oh, they are. They are, they are. You have to make sure they listen your answer. <laughs> but please remember, this is very, very important. Rahmatullah Alayhi Shaykh Mufid wanted to write a, a thesis in fact about the rules regarding to well. You know those days they had a well, water well at home? He blocked his well and then he wrote his thesis. Why did he that? do that? He said, because I don't want you know, my current situation, whatever that it is, influences my fatwa. When you want to mention something about Islam, don't mention it just because I don't, I, I want to, to look good in the eyes of the, the world or in the eyes of the general public, in the eyes. Purely look what the Quran says, understand the Quran, rest assured Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He speaks, He speaks the truth and there is a wisdom in it and everything. So we don't need to discord any Islamic teachings just to please the world. This is not the right way. This leads to tafsir of a Now, this is a, this is a very sound argument. Why is it that very often in the Quran, the Almighty God is using masculine pronoun, not the feminine pronoun. It seems that ladies are excluded in the Quran. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah.
As far as maybe, as far as the reference is concerned about this particular ayah, maybe he's right that in this ayah the address to believing men and believing women was because of the uh, probably it was the wife of Zat Jafar Tayyar who came back yes. uh, from As the journey and minds. then uh, and then she said that why there is no ayah for the women, so she the message was communicated to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then he said and then this ayah was revealed. Maybe it is true for this ayah, mm -hmm. but the question is in general, because there are many instances in the Holy Quran where the address is for believing men and believing women, and in some places it's not, like you explained. So the question is, why? In some places, is this when there? MashaAllah. So, he, 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 he... I have an answer, but... He made it more difficult for you, that yes, on occasions that explicitly males and females are, are mentioned, we have no problem with that. <laughs> like chapter 33, Ayah 35, and a few more instances as well. The question is about the rest of the Quran. What is your explanation for the rest of the Quran? More, Why? more than the segregation, they were, they were worried about inclusion. They were not worried about the segregation. Yes, Ahsan. Yes. Yes, the, the concern and the argument, the, mis the question is about why is, it, why is it not that Quran is constantly talking? Because Quran God is for both men and women, believers, disbelievers, hypocrites, who are they all? Why is it that, that Quran is always talking to both groups of males and females? It seems most of the time Quran is only talking to men, not to females. In this ayah, Hajj Riyaz, we don't have any issue. The question is, says that, look, I'm fine with this ayah 12 of Surah al hadith Yes, this ayah Surah 12 and ayah 13 clearly said, is addressing and talking and mentioning the good uh, uh, glad tidings for both believing men and believing women. The next ayah also is clearly mentioning that uh, believing hypocrites and uh, men and uh, 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 female hypocrites or so and so. That's very good. I'm fine with that. My question is for the rest of the Quran. Ninety-nine percent of the time in the Quran we see that God is only talking to men. Why? Uh, maybe because generally the man is the head of the household. So it's not necessarily just talking to the, the men only. It's just sending a message to maybe the head of the household. I think I know what you mean, it needs a little bit of more, because uh, is it always the, the head of the house that sometimes if the rule is related to the family issues as a responsibility, like as the man who is in charge of the maintenance and everything, fair enough. But there are so many other issues, like for example, when it comes to namaz, why is it that for us, 
اقیمو یعنی ادرسینگ ایس فعل العام ادرسین مین مین There is no single example in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ya ayyuhal lawati I'm trying to make it a feminine pronoun Ya ayyuhal lawati aqimna salat There is no such thing Because females also they, they, they need to pray Yes brother between you are you an insan, you are you an nas, yes, it means mankind, males or females. But amanu, literally it means you men who believe. Specifically Yes. Uh, <laughs> what? what <laughs> you are getting there. What Mortaza mentioned and now what you are getting to, it's getting us to the answer. But still, it's not, it, as I said, it needs a little bit of explanation. <laughs> Because English also you have kind not of as much as Arabic, but in English also you have this gender issue as well. When a speaker is speaking and is addressing and talking, it is not eloquent to consensus it he or she, he or she, he or she. When he says he, males and females who are in the garden, they understand that this he here doesn't mean particularly he versus she. Sometimes they understand that it's a he versus she. Quran also sometimes is talking about issues exclusively related to the ladies. It's very explicit to use the feminine pronouns. Ya Nisa and Nabi, lastunna ka ahadin min an Nisa. All the pronouns are in feminine. All wives of the Prophet, you females are not like other women. Because the issue is exclusively about females. Sometimes it's exclusively speaking to men and about men. Quran is explicitly uses the term Rajal, which means men. Like, Take two witnesses for the time of the divorce. Two men, Rajal is clearly mentioned. Okay? In Surah al nisa and one of the difficult surah of the Quran to memorize, because constantly the feminine pronouns are mentioned. Because there are issues related to exclusively females with their period, with their waiting period of their uh, uh, divorce and things like that. But in Arabic language, similar to English, when you are addressing a crowd that is a mixed crowd of men and women, grammar, and Quran, because it's speaking to us in Arabic, Quran also follows the Arabic uh, grammar pattern. In Arabic language, if you are speaking to a mixed crowd, you don't need to say, Ya Ayyuhal Ladina, or Ya Ayyuhal when you use the masculine, you include all of them. The prime example that you acknowledge and appreciate now is about Ahl Kisa. In Surah Al Ahzab, Ayah 33, chapter 33, means you men. But you know that Fatwa Al Zahra was among them as well. Undoubtedly, she and Sony all have narrated that the accuracy of this ayah 
was the Holy Prophet, Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussain, and Fatima to Zahra. So there's a female in the group as well. Yet Quran says, Ankom, not An. There's no need to say Ankom wa an Anke. Because once you see the masculine, masculine pronoun, other than when you say Rejal or Nisa, men or women makes it exclusive. But when you use a pronoun for the masculine, it includes everybody. So, Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu is not only addressing all you believing men. It means all you who believe, whether men or women. Another reason, another example, there are many examples to sign from the Quran. Another example is in Surah Al-Tahrim. Daraballahu lil ladina amanu mra'ata fir'aun. The Almighty give introduces, the Almighty God introduces the wife of Fir'aun, Ayyuhal as a role model. For who? Lil ladina amanu. For those who believe. This, those who believe grammatically, it sounds like those men who believe. But Ayas Asiya was not a role model only for believing men. Before she is a role model for believing men, she is a role model for believing women. As a female, she is a role model more for the females than males. But because Quran wants to say that she is not only a role model for the female, he doesn't say that Baraballahu lillawati amanna to use it feminine. If God had used feminine pronoun here, it would mean she is only a role model for females, not for men. But God wants to say she is a role model for both male and female. Grammatically, the masculine had to be used. Therefore, wherever you see in the Quran, this format is used. In fact, it's addressing both males and females. This is as far as the grammar is concerned. However, to make it explicit, we say for the sake of the dummies, in certain occasions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces the general rule. The example that Brother Bashir mentioned, chapter 33, Ayah 34, is the most comprehensive example. If you wish to read it in, in Surah Al-Ahzab, Ayah number 35, yes. 10 characteristics of both men and women are mentioned. This is a unique example in the Quran. إِلَّا الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَانِ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَانِ وَالْغَانَتِينَ وَالْغَانِتَانِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَالصَّالِحَانِ Today, though, I don't want to take your time. Exactly it is mentioned for both of them. So that nobody comes with the complaint that Quran is talking only about men. No, it's, there is no gender. In Surah Al-Nasa, in the beginning of Surah Al-Nasa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَكِ خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسٍ وَاحِدًا Both of you created from the same source, males and females. For God, there is no gender as an issue. Can I add something from that with you? I can also play a commercial, uh, in, uh, but uh, because I don't have time to answer it now, when the time comes, if I'm inshallah around, I will bring it up. There is a still another question to this, uh, if I want to play more devil advocate, I can make it more complicated, but leave it, I, I think it's okay for now, because that one also needs time to answer. Bismillah. So, one of the, um, in my research, I found out that the same ayah 33-33 that in this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts by addressing the women the wives of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then he comes to a situation where he says innama yuridullahu now here this innama is segregating the wives from the Ahlul Bayt so this is one way of doing it but in this particular ayah we get, a, we get another kind of uh, indication that the ayah before this one Number 12, the ayah 11, ayah 11 according to Tafsir al Safi, it is for Imam al Zaman. Salam. So the ayah before that is that Manda Ladi Yukri Lullah Fardan Hassanan, Fayodar Ifahu, Lahu, Walahu, Ajrun Kareem. So now that ayah is addressing Imam al Zaman. Salam. And the next ayah is addressing the believing men and women. So there has to be segregation. So that it is understood that the next ayah is talking about the general men and women, the believers, and not the Ahlul Bayt, or, or it is not the address here. Because Yawma Saral Mu'minuna is addressing the Prophet وسلم, that you are going to see. So who is he going to see? The general Mu'minin who fall in the category. So there is a distinction, to create the distinction based on Tafsir al -Sab. In this point, we can, we can prove it straight away after. I love. No, it's being recorded. 
It's being recorded. Being recorded. So is the answer, inshallah, clear? Because I'll play the devil advocate. I want to make sure that you are leaving the masjid with a clear mind about the issue of uh, gender in the Quran. In a nutshell, the answer is that when Allah swam, in Arabic grammar, whether in the Quran or anywhere else, when you are using a masculine pronoun, you mean all. It could be the whole group or men. It could, uh, grammatically also, it could mean that you are talking to a mixed gathering, male and female. You don't need to. Uh, whereas if you use the, the word rajal, which means men, or nisa, which means female, it means you are talking to particular gender. Otherwise, if you use the, the masculine pronoun, either you are talking to only men or you are talking to a mixed gathering. Grammatically, if Allah had said, Yomatharal mu'minin yas anuruhum bayna aidihim, without adding mu'minat, grammatically, still nobody could argue that he's talking only about men. It, grammatically, it would include females as well. There is no question about it. In these situations, usually when the Quran is talking about the hypocrites, in certain situations of this in, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes more explicit and mentions males and females. Maybe to clear any doubt, or so that, as I said, so that no one argues that, uh, like the one that Asma bin Omez came and, and that asked that question, not everybody is so illiterate grammatically to understand for that purpose. For the, my understanding, Wallahu Alam, is more for clarity purposes. Not that grammatically it would be wrong if only uh, Mu'minun was mentioned. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائلا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا ومحمد وعلى محمد صلوات الله